Our word problems we're going to do are both uh, physics-based. And our first one, we're going to look at a wagon that is on a hill. So wagon is on a 30 degree hill and weighs 100 pounds. What is the magnitude of force needed to keep the wagon from moving? Was the magnitude of force parallel with the hill? So we got 30 degree hill, and we're gonna draw our wagon as a single point. And it weighs 100 pounds, so that's 100 pound force going directly down. So we'll call this FG. Now we're supposed to uh, have another force parallel with the hill to keep the wagon from moving. So let's think about how this could be drawn. What happens if we have a force going this direction? Well, we're gonna hold the wagon downhill even faster than gravity would do it by itself. So that's not the right direction to pull. To keep the wagon stationary, we're gonna pull that direction. I'll call this uh, just F for the other force. Actually, we'll call it FP for the force of the pull. <clears throat> now, this is a static equilibrium problem. If you have studied some physics, there's a third force, and I'll draw that in green. I'm going to erase it because it's not really important to understand that force to figure out this problem. And this is what we call the normal force, or Fn. And what that is, is the force the hill exerts on the wagon. It's the reason the wagon doesn't fall directly downwards. The hill's underneath it pushing the wagon. Uh, you could do a static equilibrium problem with these three forces if you computed the normal force. Uh, what we're going to do instead is ignore these two forces, or ignore the uh, normal force, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to project gravity in the direction of the hill. So what we're going to do is figure out what is this vector right here. And this will be the projection of, oh, and we're gonna have subscripts of subscripts. I'll write this even bigger. Projection of the gravity force, so Fg onto Fp. So we're gonna compute this projection. And then all we're gonna do is look at the magnitude of this force, and the magnitude better be the same as the magnitude of this force. So whatever the magnitude of the green vector is, needs will be the same magnitude uh, of the force going in the uphill direction. So what we're gonna do is figure out how much is gravity pulling in the downhill direction. So let's write down what these vectors are. F, and let's start with the gravity, the easy one. It's zero in the x, negative 100. And Fp, I don't know the magnitude, so I'll just leave it M for magnitude, but I do know the direction it's going, and this is polar coordinates, so we're having cos, our angle's 30 degrees, sine 30 degrees, and we can write down those values pretty easily. Cos 30 is square root three, oops, square root three over two comma one half. And I want to find the magnitude of the projection of Fg onto Fp, which is the magnitude now just using the dot Fp. This is the projection of one vector onto another. Fg Fp over Fp magnitude squared times 
times the vector f p. All right, so now we're going to use some algebraic properties of the magnitude here. So first up, we have a scalar multiplied by a vector, so I can split the magnitude up. Like that. This is just a number here. So I could again bring that scalar outside the magnitude. It's already positive. So I don't have to worry about an extra absolute value. And this lets me cancel. There's a fp squared and a fp. So there's some cancellation happening there. So this is really all we have to compute. So we're just going to write down all these. All right, so here we go. Fg, zero, negative 100, dot. Now I'm going to, I don't want this scalar outside, so I'm going to multiply it in. So it's square root three m over two comma m over two. And denominator fp. Actually, in this bottom one, I'm going to leave it. No, I'll just write m a few extra times. All right, I'll just use the same form I have up here. One of the problems with math is there's an infinite number of ways to do things correctly. Unfortunately, there's an infinite number of ways to do things incorrectly. But because there's an infinite number of correct ways to do things, sometimes uh, you want to go down different paths uh, simultaneously, which is generally not the best idea. It's best to pick a path, go down it, and if that doesn't work, start over and pick a different path. All right, so we're doing dot product in the numerator. So we got zero times this number, which is zero, minus 100 times m over two. And the denominator, we have square root of all this stuff squared. <clears throat> All right, numerator is pretty easy. 100 divided by 2, that's 50. M in the denominator. I have to square this stuff carefully. Square root 3 squared is 3. M squared over 2 squared plus M squared over 2 squared. And let's factor out m squared over 2 squared. And we're left with 3 plus 1. Yep. And we can go ahead and bring this outside squared. So we'll bring it outside the square root. So we just have m over 2 square root of 4. And that square root of 4 is 2, canceling that 2. The M's are going to cancel and we get negative 50. Uh, we should have positive. Ah, all right, I see why. So there was some notation I just stopped writing. I'll write in blue to bring it back. This blue, these blue vertical bars are absolute value. So I should be keeping them around. Um, and what that's going to do is turn that negative into a positive. So it'll be positive 50. So that is the number of, uh, in pounds, that's the magnitude of this 
downhill force. So it's basically moving uh, in the downhill direction with a force of 50. So to counter that, we better pull uphill with a force of 50. So the answer is 50 lbs, 50 pounds. That's what it takes to keep this 100 pound wagon from falling down the hill. All right, the last word problem we're gonna do is uh, work. And so we're gonna need is a formula for work. So normally it's force times distance. And good news is it's still force times distance, except the multiplication we're gonna use is a dot product. So F is the force vector. D is the displacement vector. And usually this is gonna be end minus start. That's how we're gonna get a vector out of a start and end point. All right, so that's all we need for work right there, that dot product, and we're ready to go ahead and get started. So we'll have a lighter wagon, 50 pounds. So find the work to move a 50 pound wagon. One hundred feet. Along a flat. Uh, pulling with a force. force 30 degrees above. The ground. So there's ground. There's the wagon. We got one force. FG, we've done enough problems, I'll just write zero, negative 50. It's got no X component in the gravity and 50 is a negative because it's downwards. We're gonna move this wagon 100 feet along a flat surface. Doesn't matter which way we go. So let's just go that direction. We're gonna end right here. Now the force is gonna be 30 degrees above the ground. And I'll use FP for the force of the pull. 30 degrees. All right, so we also have to have a magnitude of this. We have to actually know the force. Uh, so we're gonna need to know the magnitude of the force, so I better include that in the problem. And let's say the force is 20 pounds. A force of 20 pounds, uh, 30 degrees above the ground. So FP is gonna be 20 is the magnitude. Now we don't know the exact X and Y components, but we do know the direction, so we're going right into polars here. So we got our cos 30, sine 30. All right, cos 30 is square root of three over two, sine 30 is one half. And we distribute this in, we have 10 square root of three comma 10. All right, so it's FP and FG and work is, ooh, didn't really matter what force of gravity was. That was irrelevant. All we needed is FP, force of the pull times the displacement. All right, we better figure out what the displacement is. So we're pulling this wagon 100 feet, and we're pulling it 100 feet directly to the right. So there's uh, zero vertical, and we're going 100 to the right. 
So we get 100 for our x coordinate and 0 for our y coordinate. So fp is 10 square root 3 comma 10. Displacement 100, 0. So we multiply this. We have 10 square root 3 times 1,000 plus 10 times 0, which is 0. Oh. Should be 100. And when I multiply it by 10, I get 1,000 square root 3. Now, if you're uh, into science, you probably want units. I believe this is something like Newton's, uh, no, foot pounds. Yeah, it's foot pounds. The most uncreative unit ever, foot times pounds. All right, so that's how to compute work. So again, the only really confusing part of this, it's usually people don't find the regular force to be too confusing. The real tricky part can be the displacement vector. So make sure you pay attention to this displacement vector.